This is a tutorial making a spiral candle holder, starting with 42 inches of 8mm round mild steel bar. First of all put a point on one end, and working all four sides evenly, a couple of hits on each side. The metal looks th thicker when it's glowing, so it's a little bit hard to see what's going on until it cools down. Try and work each side about the same amount and then you'll have a nice square section. Keep the scale off the top of the anvil, I'm just brushing it off there. And using a butcher's block brush to scrape it off as well. It's hot rolled mild steel, which means it's got a lot of dark grey scale on it when you buy it. So when you first get it in the fire, quite often you get quite a lot of it flaking off. And if you hammer it into the surface, you won't have a very nice finish. So that's a nice point on the end. Just going to take it out and knock the corners off to make it eight sided. Got to hold it quite firmly otherwise it'll want to uh, rock. But just take it down to eight sides and then knock the corners off of that to make it 16 sides which is near enough to round. Just beat it and rotate it and you'll have a really nice round section. I'm working the thicker part of the point here and not the very end. I'll do that on the next heat. I've edited out the heats themselves. They're not very interesting to watch. So just doing the same, knocking the four corners off on the end. And then just going to tap it all the way around just to make a nice round section. So I'm making a point about around about two and two inch long round taper. Just working the very point there. As you see as it cools down, you can get a better idea of the size of it. It looked quite large when it was glowing. Over the rounded part of the far side of the anvil, just going to knock that over, make a rough right angle bend, and then refine that a little bit. You might find you can use the bic, the right point of the bic there to, to refine that as well. It doesn't have to be brilliant. Put it back in the fire, put it point upwards with the point sticking out of the fire. It's really easy to burn the, uh, the point off. I've got a metal plate here with a hole punched through it. So as I make the base, which is a metal spiral, it'll start to bend out of shape and I can just put the... Uh, the point through it and flatten it. The point's facing to my left there on the far side of the an anvil, parallel to the surface of the anvil, just starting the spiral. You make a bit of a U shape with it and then you can just put that flat on the anvil and just uh, hammer it to close it up. And then I was just working it on the far side of the anvil, just going to bend it downwards and then knock it back towards me. So, knocking it back towards me like that, just to just to roll up the spiral. That becomes much clearer as you see the uh, the spiral developing. It's much more obvious later on. So, knocking it away just to start the curve, and then knocking it back towards myself to roll up the spiral. It's glowing quite a lot now as well, which makes it quite hard to uh, to see what's going on. The camera's not particularly good at picking up the uh, the colours either. What looks like a very bright white is actually just um, sort of bright yellow. Straightening up the point by using a uh, small pair of tongs. Now I just go keep rolling up the spiral. Now 
open the point again. The first part of running the spiral is a lot more difficult. It gets a lot more easy as you as you the spiral gets bigger. So don't worry if you're finding it really difficult for the first part of the spiral. So I bent it just one place and left it quite straight in the middle, so I just uh bent that part over the bit very briefly. When you hit it towards yourself, you're sort of aiming to hit it. Imagine that. Imagine you're rubbing it up, and you're hitting it parallel to the part that you're trying to roll up. If that makes sense, you're. you're oop, bent it a bit too much there, and it didn't work out too well. But you can just correct that over the far side of the angle. This is the easiest part in the middle of the spiral. It's really easy to bend. It gets a little bit harder towards the end because it's going to want to bend too much in just one place from the heat. Don't try and bend too much at once either because you tend to try working the colder ends of it and it, those are the parts that don't want to bend. The bit that's hottest is the bit that wants to bend. There's always going to be a few slight gaps in it. I finished with the metal plate now. You can uh, use either the hardy hole or the uh, pritchard hole, the two holes in the end of the anvil. You can use those for the same same reason I was using the uh, the metal plate once you, once it gets big enough to uh, reach the sides. So you can see the metal's got an awful lot shorter now. That wasn't very good heat, that one. 
and you'll see it's red for quite a long length but it's not really hot enough to uh, to bend properly it's getting down to where I want to bend the uh, the right angle for the handle as well you want to leave yourself around about nine nine inches for, for making the handle which is just slightly over my hand span so I use my hand to measure it you see that at the moment You can make chalk marks on the anvil for measuring or something like that. Welder's chalk's quite good for that. There you go. More or less the same as my hand spam. So on the next heat, I'm going to be doing the uh, doing the bend for the handle. Oh no! <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm wrong. Just heating up the spike just to uh, just to correct that. Uh, it's easiest if you let the the spiral itself cool down a little bit before doing this, because otherwise, when you try bending the spike, you're going to be making your spiral all wonky. And put it put it face down with the spike facing downwards into the fire, but keep taking it out frequently, keep an eye on it so you don't burn the spike off. working a part of the metal that I've not worked before so uh, it's got quite a lot of scale on so I'll just scrape that off of the butcher's block brush uh, it looks thicker than it really is because it's glowing there and I'm just making a flat taper to roll up into a fish fishtail scroll so I've been it down to a couple of millimetres thick just roll it over on the far side of the anvil Fairly nice tight curl. Then knock it back towards yourself. Which is pretty much what you're doing when you're making the actual spiral of the base of the candle holder itself. The heats here are pretty short, so I haven't bothered editing them out. Just take it out, just quench the scroll there, and then I can actually hit on the scroll itself. A little bit unsure of what I was going to do then. <laughs> So just rolling enough and enough of the material to make a, a nice looking scroll. It's gotta be gotta be at least the complete term for a scroll, otherwise it won't look right. So now I'm gonna roll gonna bend it in the other direction to make the, the circle of the handle. So I quench the uh, the scroll at the end so that I can actually tap on it and it'll be the hotter part of the metal that bends. Not hitting very hard at all there. And just keep heating up another part and work it round. The closer it is to a circle, the, the better it'll look. And if you keep working it around the same part of the, uh, the bick, you might want to make a couple of parallel chalk marks. If you keep working between those two, you should be able to work yourself a very nice 
circular looking handle. You can use the, uh, the top of the anvil to correct it with the hammer or just use a pair of tongs like that just to bend it back into a straight. I find a lot to uh, judge stuff by eye for how circular it is. So I hold it, hold it up to the light or hold it up to a, a solid coloured surface you get a really good idea what it's like. You can see on the hood of the uh, the hood of the anvil, I've got a couple of circles drawn on there that I can hold things up to larger, larger objects. Really useful. So there you go, looking fairly circular. By eye, you can see the uh, see any sharp bends in it or any flat flat areas. You can see them a lot better than you can pick them up on the camera. See there on the uh, on the hood of the of the forge, there's a couple of circles drawn that I've used for for making larger objects that are around in the past. Now if there's a C, you can close up the C like that. And uh, if you get the scale off, scale off with a uh, butcher's block brush, you have a much nicer finish on the handle. So the only thing left to do now is to put the right angle bend in. You can do it earlier on before you make the handle itself. Um, it's much of a muchness, whichever one you prefer. Try both. So I'm just going to quench, quench along the handle itself, and that'll make me a nice solid lever that I can use to to put the right angle bend in. And I've also got to straighten straighten the handle so it faces straight across the uh, straight across the handle holes. First of all. First of all, I'm going to straighten it up. I had a little moment here where I had to think about which pair of tongs, but there you go. Put that, put that bend in there. That's just strained it up so it's in line. And there's just one more right angle bend to do. Pull it towards yourself, and there you go. That's your candle holder done. While it's in the vice, it's quite a handy moment just to uh, just to straighten up as much as you can. But nothing's as good as actually putting it on a put it on a flat surface and have a good look at it. And there's still a little bit of heat left in there. There's a dull dull kind of red glow just at the base of the handle. So just enough for me to bend it by hand there. If you find yourself bend, bending cold metal at this point, then stick it back in the fire. Make life easy for yourself. That sits reasonably flat as well. And there you go. You've made a candle holder. <laughs>